Hey everybody, welcome back to the Link Cast. I'm your host Matt, and I'm Tyler. So Tyler, this is the Linux Cast. In case you didn't know this, but in case everybody else didn't know this, this is the Linux Cast, and uh, we talk about Linux things. And usually, <laughs> there's about a ten minute period at the beginning where I say <laughs> one of us here isn't using Linux. Usually that's the mm -hmm. case, but this week we don't have. I, 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 how am I supposed to make fun of you if you're using Linux? I don't understand. Yeah, you can't. I, and I, I just want to make this clear to everybody. Uh, this is also the podcast where I get to say this. Um, so I say everyone should go and head over to Matt's. Uh, he's got a fantastic pa uh, Patreon. And uh, you could become one of his uh, cool patrons who support him. Uh, you can also buy merch at our store. He has his own merch on my store. It's confusing. I know um, he's, he's trying to ev evade taxes. It's all right. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> you should go and support because when he hits a certain level, he has to become a high tier Gentoo user like myself. <laughs> And, um, uh, he's scared, but it's okay. Uh, coming to the, coming to, coming out of the dark side into the light is, it's a good thing. I know it's scary, but it's good. It's good. See, there was a, there was a point there about a month and a half ago where it looked like I was on a you know steep incline towards that number, but I've mm -hmm. lost about $40 a month since then. <laughs> so I'm not worried about it. I'm not, I'm not worried about having to use Gen 2 anytime soon. So I have hey, a look. That's just the Christmas time, all right? Everybody's trying to save their money. But look, here's what's happening. Now people are getting raises and shit. You about to you about to hit it, man. You about to join the light, all right? <laughs> Nobody wants to see you over there on the dark side, all right? I'm, using, it, I'm, I'm still using Manjaro. All right, so Tyler, I have a feeling all this talk about the forbidden distro uh, mm -hmm. has to do with something to do with what you're using right now. So what, what have you been up to in Linux this week? Um... I had uh, a whole bunch of great help from um, uh, uh, Josh or Joshua Lee, um, Ben Fitzpatrick, um, uh, of course, my roommate Scott, Art Center. Um, yeah, uh, I had a whole bunch of uh, help from people who have used Gentoo or are using Gentoo, and uh, they convinced me to just go ahead, give it one more shot with their help, and... Um, I have to be honest, uh, I had a successful install, which didn't take too, too long. Um, again, it's still Gen 2, so it, it's not like it was a 20-minute install by any means, <laughs> but um, it it well, it was nice. And now, I mean, I have Final Fantasy XIV uh, like online uh, because Scott's super into that game right now. And uh, I, I have it running flawlessly on here. I have all of my games running like that I've tested out working great. Um, yeah, I, 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 I genuinely don't have any problems with Gen 2 <laughs> whatsoever, which is very, uh, very interesting. And also DWM works amazingly with my vertical monitor over here, which is. So I would huge. just like to put in a bet. I don't know if anybody wants to take me up on this bet that by the time we get to the podcast next week, he'll no longer be using Gen 2. But I, but I don't understand why. Like, why, why would that happen? Tyler, my friend, I've known you since, like, March of last year. Maybe even mm -hmm. a little bit earlier than that. I hop a lot. And you hop more than I ever did. <laughs> mm -hmm. And, my friend, I was the biggest distro hopper ever. Like, I had that mm -hmm. title for a long time. And then Tyler comes along like, ooh, I'm King Hopper. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's a horrible mm -hmm. name, but that's what you should. <laughs> you, yeah. Like you use, you installed Manjaro four weeks ago with me. Yeah, for twenty five minutes. And I don't think you made it twenty five minutes. I think that was very generous. I think it was more like fifteen minutes. Uh, but <laughs> I'm pretty sure you used like three distros that day. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So well. I, I I did not like it when Manjaro was like, "Oh yeah, your entire expat drive doesn't exist." I me. didn't like, say what? that you didn't have a good reason to hop. I'm just saying you. Oh no no I, no! You I hop a lot, so yeah. I will put a fiver on the fact that you will not be. Matter of fact, I I will literally put if you're 
uh, still on Gen uh-huh. Two next week. I will up uh-huh. my Patreon contribution on your on your Patreon to ten dollars. Okay, actually, I I would prefer it if next week. Uh, how about this? Next week, if I'm still on Gen Two, you do nothing. If in two weeks' time I'm still on Gen Two, you have to install it. On oh, your no, main machine. No, no, no. That's not. That's that's too much. That's asking too much. That's <laughs> asking too much. I have. I have my. I'll help you, man. It's I don't. I don't. I, <laughs> I could have <laughs> Mister Gen to himself help me. I still wouldn't do it. Um. I have. I have very much have my point where I will install Gen two. There's there's a, a monetary value <laughs> that has been set, so we know when that will happen. Um, and I will do it live on camera. I will do it. Um, All right. Well, how about this? Um, if it, if in a week I'm still on Gen Two, you have to take the goal where you install Gen Two down by ten dollars. Okay. Cool. Go, go from three fifty to three forty. Uh, that's all right. Yeah. Hey, ten dollars is ten dollars, bro. <laughs> I'll do that. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. Uh, all right. So. Uh, my week in Linux has not been as uh, fun. So, I finished my MX Linux review last week, and I really liked MX Linux, and I spent almost two months in it. So, the fact that I spent that long, it kind of tells you how much I enjoyed it. And so, I decided I was going to find another distro to do my next long-term review on, and I chose Void Linux. Now, I've had experiences with Void in the past, and they, at that point, I couldn't even get it installed. This time, I got Void installed. I got uh, i3 uh, installed. I got Xorg installed. I got all this stuff installed. It's actually working really well. I was really impressed, actually, with the software availability. I thought that for sure the repos were going to be pretty sparse in terms of software, but there's actually a lot of software available there. The only thing I couldn't, as a matter of fact, the only thing I couldn't find install is Discord, and that's kind of like a cross the board. Distros, or, or, D- Discord is nowhere in any repo other than like the AUR. <laughs> like, nope. It, no, that's not true. In Gen two, you just emerge Discord. Uh, that's not in a repo. That's you compiling it from source. I can do that on any phone. Oh no, 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 no! You can get the binary too. You can just emerge the binary. That's fine. <sighs> Fuck off, you in your Gen two. But anyways, the 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 point the point All is. Right. I love this, love this podcast. The the point is, yeah, yeah. By the end of it, I'm gonna be murdering you and choking you with your Gen two. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 anyways, the the experience was actually pretty good until I got to the point where I wanted to connect my external hard drive, and found that there's no capability to connect to any external hard drive in Void by default. At least for me, like for whatever reason. So normally. So I don't set up an FS tab for all my external hard drives. I don't like having them connected all the time at boot. Mm. It's just not something mm. that I like having to do because I don't need access to them all the time. So I just connect to them mm. when I want to use them. So normally when I want to connect to an external hard drive, I'll open up my file manager and just click on the drive and it mounts, right? Yeah. That's like across the board, every Linux distribution I've ever used works just fine that way. So I open up Crusader, which by the way, was in the repos awesome right um and uh there are no drives there like there there wasn't even a category for removable media which is always the case uh so i thought crusader was boinked so i installed thunar there's no removable media there either so i was like you know fine uh maybe there's a dependency somewhere i'm missing or something like that and i I thought maybe it was like an ntfs thing right because Linux doesn't always play well with NTFS and non-free stuff. So, uh, but the thing is, it wasn't just my NTFS drive. It's also the two EXT4 drives I have in my computer that aren't the void drive. Those weren't showing up either. So I got into the terminal and decided just to mount them the old-fashioned way, like you do in Arch Linux. And uh, couldn't get that to work either. I just would not see it. I got it to mount fine, but then I tried to CD into it and said I had no permissions to cd into it (laughs) like what the hell is going on it doesn't make any sense so uh that's where i left void a couple days ago uh i I, did you install like gvfs or whatever that thing is there's a couple dependencies somebody in the discord told me that i should try to install i haven't had a chance to go back and try them yet 
Um, but that experience just it really kind of soured me so far in Boy. Um, like there are certain things, Tyler, that have to be working in order to be considered a computer. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. it's, it's just like in order for your car to be considered a car, it has to have wheels, it has to have a steering <laughs> wheel, and all the things that make those things connected, you know, and an engine. Otherwise, yeah. otherwise you're Fred Flintstone. You're going to be you know, going along the ground with your feet. It's the same thing True. with a Linux distro. There are certain things that just have to work. And one of those things that has to work is the ability to connect drives. If you can't connect drives, you can't load anything. It doesn't work. Mm -hmm. um, so they, that was a broken experience. Um, the other thing is that I did this week or I'm working on is and and everybody's gonna hate me for this. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna try out Emacs again. <laughs> okay, I have a reason. I have a reason. So, I moved all of my writing from like Google Docs and LibreOffice into Vim, and it's been a fantastic experience. Like I've seriously not regretted it a single time. But Vim. At a certain point, once you get to a certain word count, like you get to 100,000 words, and it slows the fuck down. Like it gets really, really laggy at at, at over 100,000 words. And I don't know why. Like it has nothing to do with line counts because, I mean, a lot of like programs are thousands of lines long. But for whatever reason, word count seems to be the limit. Like there seems, seems to be some kind of limit. And at a certain point, it just lags. Like, you can press J to go down, and uh, there's, like, a noticeable delay be between you pressing the key and the cursor actually moving down a line. Uh, so that's been annoying. So I decided I was going to try uh, Emacs again and see if I can get Markdown to work really well in that and see if the longer documents work well in that. If not, I'm going to have to find a, a GUI uh, Markdown editor to do. So that, and that'd be I would recommend Obsidian for that. Is it open source? Mm -hmm. so I keep, I, there must be one that's another one's called Obsidian. Cause I tried one called Obsidian. It was uh, closed source. Um, well, it should be an. It's an. I believe it's an open source Markdown editor. I'll get, if I have to get. I, I really. I really don't want to leave them. I love them. Everything about them I like, except for this one thing. Like if I could get it to not lag or on the, because I edit long documents all the time. Yeah. And I, the lagging thing really bothers me. It's like the, the fucking green thing that keeps flashing on my screen. It's one of those things where you, you can kind of put up with it, but it's really fucking annoying. Yep. Mm. All right. So, now that I've had some water, it's time to move on to the contact information. If you want to get in contact with us, you can do so at the LinuxCast on Twitter. You can subscribe to all of our audio feeds and stuff like that at the LinuxCast.org. No, there's not a website there yet. I've been really fucking busy. I can't help it. Uh, you can contact us via email, email at linuxcast.org. I would like to go back to that previous point just for a second. Even if I hadn't been, you know, really busy the last couple of weeks, there probably still wouldn't be a website. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you can uh, support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast if you want to get me to, you know, closer to that goal of installing Gentoo. Um, feel free to do that. Uh, you can we need it to happen. Yeah, <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Anyways, uh, you can uh, support Tyler on all of his stuff. He uh, He's on Odyssey, link in the video description. You can also sub support him on uh, YouTube at youtube.com slash Tyler. Good Lord. YouTube.com slash Zany OG. Zany OG. I really need to write that down so I can actually remember it and not just, you know, whatever. You can also mm -hmm. uh, join the Discord and the Telegram groups. Those links will be in the video description as well. And subscribe to the Linux Cast at youtube.com slash the Linux Cast. So, that is the contact information, which was done fairly reasonably and not with a ton of, you know, horribleness there in the center. Um, so, news. News. Every week, Tyler and I scramble, usually the day before the podcast, sometimes a few hours before. And uh, we, we try to find news that we can talk about. So today, we uh, have uh, two links for you. Tyler, what is your link of the week, your news link with, of the week? Mine is that uh, there's a new version of Firefox out. And it's, uh, I mean, it's got some new, like, th themes to it. 
colorway themes, which is awesome. <laughs> and it it removes some printing support and um I don't know, it's got some other minor chain changes. Which for a browser that is literally burning to the ground oh awesome. The dryer's done. But for a for an OS that is literally or OS for a browser that is literally burning to the ground at the current moment, um yeah, we got more themes. <laughs> like thinking you wanna our browser kinda sucks. What can we do to make it better? I know. More colors. Wait a minute. Themes. <laughs> themes. We we haven't had themes, wait a minute. We've had themes. Like, haven't we had themes forever now? We're, now we're just adding built-in themes that aren't by developers? Uh, just imagine being a company where your your whole entire existence is based on the court argument that you're a competitor to Google. And it, that is, like, dwindling as it is. Like, you now only have, like, 4% of the market share. And even those people are considering leaving. And you're like, but in court, we could argue we did make new themes. I mean, Google doesn't do that all the time. <laughs> like, wow. uh, like that's because they're busy making a good browser. <laughs> exactly, they're making Maybe. the browser that everyone uses. <laughs> that's, I, I don't. God, Mozilla is poorly run. <laughs> just, I know, man. It hurts. Like, it legitimately. Like hurts. you, you employ seven hundred and fifty employees, Mozilla, and. This is all you could do. <laughs> yeah. You have you have all of this talent, and you're like, huh, what should we focus on? Let's come up with, like, you know, uh, let's dedicate like 25 of them to making like to reskinning a VPN. You, that, you, that sounds like a like, great idea. You know, somewhere about a, you know two months ago when they were deciding to do this, there was a, somewhere in Mozilla headquarters. They were in a conference room, and they had a four hour meeting trying to decide which colors they chose for the theme. <laughs> and they're like, let's have a salmon colored one. And let's have a, Oh, I know mint colored. And then there's this little, really bright yellow. And Ooh, how about, how about a uh, lavender purple and baby blue? You know, <laughs> I just and, imagine all these high, like highly overpaid executives just spending hours on this being like, yeah, we worked hard today. We accomplished a lot. Those colors. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just see, I just see that the, they're, they're in that meeting take, if I, trying to figure out colors, but they run out of ideas. So they send out, send an intern out to, hey, to Sherwin, Sherwin Williams to get a color palette. <laughs> oh, no. See, I mean, th this is exactly how this went down. That, that that happened with execs and then a team of like 14 devs were told this is their two week project and you're like two, two weeks no, <laughs> we had two weeks to work on seven no, funny at the, and at the end of the two weeks the lead of the, the engineering team comes back like sorry man we couldn't do it in time we're gonna have to need some extra time <laughs> <laughs> it's horrible CSS, CSS wasn't working right <laughs> Like, oh, like for what for whatever reason we there's like an x there's an extra curly bracket in the css in the css file and we just can't find it where no matter what we try <laughs> oh god that's so mean <laughs> all right uh, oh man let's go ahead and move on to my <laughs> so my uh news item of the week i got laughing so hard my face hurts <laughs> um all right, so my, my news item of the week is that uh, KD Plasma 5.24, which is the next LTS release of KD Plasma, has been uh, released. And it has a ton of new features, uh, a better support in KRunner for stuff. It has a new uh, like GNOME-based like um, flyout view for, for applications and stuff like that, which looks really nice. Um, there is some new uh, effects and stuff like that and there's uh, better support for wayland and uh, pipewire and there's uh, more tweaks to the menus and notification systems as well so it's a really big release and it looks amazing and unfortunately it's not on manjaro yet so i can't even try it sad oof well i mean there's manjaro for you yeah like like we're arch based but we're not really arch based anymore <laughs> 
It's really weird. And mm-hmm. like, we don't really want your arch stuff. Get your arch cooties away from us, but we're going to take it eventually. It's really weird. I don't know. I have thoughts about Manjaro. I mean, you won't even bother thinking about it once you once you start using Gen 2. I mean, it's just, it's just how, the, how it works, you know? Probably the feature that I'm looking forward to the most in this is that they've fixed, supposedly, the ability for Windows to remember the last display they were on in multi-monitor setups. It's something that I've kind of oh, wanted nice. for ages. <laughs> like it should have been mm-hmm. there forever. Now, hopefully, they can get it so that you can also select it so that it follows the mouse when you don't want it to go pop up, pop up on your sixth monitor. And, you you know, that'd be cool. That used to be a feature, but they pulled it out or something or it doesn't work. It just is really weird. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to that actually coming to Manjaro. Because uh, it looks like I'm going to be on Manjaro for like another week. Because I still, I, you know, I, mean, I can't switch to the next one in my like Versus series until I actually go through and compile all the stuff that I want to record in Manjaro and then actually shoot that part of the video. And then I can go to Endeavor, which is is my next stop. Uh, and I'll spend uh, like a month in that. Um, although I wasn't, ex- I was not expecting to spend a month in Manjaro. It was only supposed to be two weeks, but it's been so fucking busy. I haven't had a chance to actually go through and you do that first part of the video yet. So I don't know whether or not I'll spend as much time on the other two. And obviously the other two are Endeavor and Arco. So I've spent a lot of t- time in Arco. So that won't be, won't be as big a deal. So, um, yeah, so that's the news. Um, now, uh, Moving on to the main topic, which is, is Brave a good browser or is it just a crypto scam? I'm going to make that the title when I publish this because that's obviously going to get some views. Uh, So, uh, I spent a a good two months using Brave as my primary browser. And I made a video about why I was switching away from it eventually. But my question for you is, do you think Brave is actually a good browser or do you think that they've just taken Chromium and added crypto into it? obviously it's uh it's uh it's a fine browser because it it's chromium which is just un which is just chrome without some extensions um and uh then there's the crypto added on top of it which is just your opinion of whether or not it's a scam or not which I mean, if we want to, all right, let's, let's just all be honest. Um, if there's one person in the stream who, uh, can honestly tell me that you would be, uh, in, interested in investing in bat, I need you to go down to your local psych ward, get checked out immediately. Um, because you are not okay, brother. And I wish the best for you. <laughs> um, that is a terrible investment. Um, it's a stupid idea. Um, like honestly, all right, I don't care if you like crypto or not, but let's think about it honestly. Okay. So you have a problem with ads. That's, that's the only problem. You have a problem with ads. You don't want to see ads. It doesn't matter who's serving you the ads that no one's ever said that that's a problem with ads. It's just the fact that you're getting ads. So Brave's whole thing of let's replace it and give you ads served let, by let, us. Let's replace who shows you the ads. <laughs> yeah, that that doesn't matter at all. Does nothing. And then also the whole spitch of creators will earn more is a complete load of bullshit. <laughs> because all right, at least at least with regular ads, the creators of the website or um, you know of YouTube channels, they get your ad revenue like. They, that that that's they get ad revenue from it so they make money guaranteed if you're blocking it the only way to earn bat is when someone gives it to you and there's not a good chance like if you watch a few small creators you're most likely going to give your bat to the bigger ones that you spend more of your time watching but and it, stuff, so. it's even more than that not only do you have to get people to give you the cryptocurrency but you also have to be signed up to receive it yeah, and the, the like I you went through and done this. I went through and signed up for to receive it, and that such that whole process is such a pain in the ass to sign up for. You have to sign up. You have to sign up for an account with Brave, 
and then they shuffle you, shuffle you off to a payment pro, a, like a crypto payment processor. Uh, I don't know what the other one is, but the other one of them is Gemini. And honestly, guy, that thing is run by the Winklevoss twins. Yeah, the Winklevoss twins. Did not even know they were still freaking alive? I thought that they died in some kind of incestuous <laughs> glory or something. I don't know. Um, like, like, or either that, or, or Mark Zuckerberg had them killed. I mean, yeah. like, like, I didn't even know they were still around, but they are. Like, it was hilarious because you go through this process, you sign up for Brave, and then you sign up for the Gemini thing, and then about a few hours later, you get an email from the Winklevoss twins. I mean, obviously, it's like a, like a, 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 a pre-selected email, yeah. like everybody gets it. But yeah. still, like, I got this email, like, wait a minute. The Winklevoss twins. <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> it was so weird. And, and then you have to sign up. You have to give them... You have to... In order to have a Gemini account that actually is can accept payment from Brave, you have to give them an actual bank account information. Yeah. So it's not private. Right. At all. And, and then you have to go back to Brave and you have to link the two accounts together. It's a <laughs> such a pain in the fucking yep. ass and all of and that then, for a dollar a month <laughs> if that dude i could be loaded in bat and i genuinely would not go through the hassle of getting it out like i'm not interested and i mean what am i gonna do how is that ever gonna be worth anything like how is it ever well the, uh, like the answer to that question is it's not ever going to be worth Exactly. It, 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 it's worth pennies. It's the it's the exact same problem that Odyssey has. Okay, mm -hmm. is that it's it's an it's a it's a shit coin, but an actual shit coin. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's like a shit coin with purpose. Yeah, like, which is still like, nothing. Like it's not a scam, like an like the the shit coins everybody is thinking of. Yeah, the the literal the, shit the literal coins. scans, but it's still just as stupid as those coins just in another way you know what i mean yeah like yeah. the idea of being able to monetarily contribute to create creators in a way that is not shady as fuck like youtube is a good idea we can just put that yeah. out there it's a good idea but the way brave has gone through and done it it it's not a good idea the way they've done it well, Yes, and their their advertising or marketing about it is very confusing because because it's like we're solving a problem, but you're not solving. You're just showing me different ads. Like it doesn't it doesn't matter. There's still ads. Like, like if I don't want to see ads, I don't want to see ads. I, like, I can I can okay. So I will say that the ads that they serve are less annoying than the full page ads you'll get if you like visit if you ever visit, visit like The Verge without an ad blocker. They like do whole like background ads and stuff like that. It's annoying as fuck. It like takes yeah. it takes their website that normally loads in like four or five seconds, which is already freaking slow, and it makes it like a thirty second load time. <laughs> it's so stupid. So I will say that the ads that Brave serve at least get rid of that problem. Like they're 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 faster to load. They don't make the web slower. They just pop up on your screen, so, you know, every five seconds. The biggest problem I have with their ads. Is that they're all horrible. Like, I don't give a shit about crypto, and every single advertisement they have is about fucking crypto. Like, mm -hmm. how are, how is this company making money without actual advertisers? Like, it doesn't make any sense to me. Like, they don't, uh, like, there's no actual, I mean, I mean like every once in a while you'll see a, a, an advertisement from someone, you know, I, I, I saw one. God, well, I, yeah, but hold on, let, 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 let's just be honest about it. Who... <laughs> who is interested in marketing to the people who use Brave? Well, I mean, people will buy advertising on anything if it's cheap enough. Well, well, but no, but like, I don't think you understand my point. Like, all right, so let's say, for an example, you just made a new game, all right? You want to reach the most people possible, right? You have a fixed budget. You don't, you don't have endless amounts of money. Are you going to spend your money to try and market to the people who use Brave? I know what we should do. We should advertise the Linux cast on Brave because it'd probably be really cheap. <laughs> well, no, see, the thing is, is the reason why you only see crypto ads on there is because if you're if you're using Brave, most likely you're, into, you're interested in other you're, crypto. You're crap. into crypto, yeah. And, and that's, that's true. And I think that's the reason why it annoyed me so much is because I'm not into crypto, like, at all. Like, 
I understand. I mean, I'm not super into crypto. I have crypto, but like, I don't know. I'm not interested in like, t- buying NFTs and shit. Every time I say I'm not into crypto, there's always going to be that one commenter. Well, Matt, you should get into crypto. You'll make a lot of money. Like, well, I'm pretty sure I missed that boat already. Um, yeah. You know, if I, if I had Bitcoin like three years ago when it was like a thousand dollars of coin or something, I'd be a happy man. But granted, I would have cashed out the minute it went to five thousand dollars of coin. <laughs> There's yeah. no way I was gonna like seriously. I was there would have been no way I would have stuck in that the whole time. But the, that's even kind of beside the point. It's like going back to what I was saying. Is like the the idea that they were they had is sort of a good one because being able to directly contribute some kind of money from you directly to the creator is a good idea. I mean, that's the reason why Patreon yeah. is successful. The reason why things like Libera pay, you know, exists, you know, the problem is they, <laughs> excuse me. The problem is they've gone through and muddied the water with a, with a cryptocurrency that nobody wants and is never going yeah. to be worth anything. So even if the creator has gone through and signed up for their, gone through the sign-up process to be able to receive it, they're going to have to go through it and receive a very large amount of bat in order to actually make anything worthwhile. Yeah. You know what I mean? So. And then you also have to deal with the, like, you lose money when it comes to exchanging yeah, it. And then and you have to get it it out of bat into some yeah. other kind of currency, like actual money or a stable coin or Bitcoin or whatever you want to do. And then that's going to take five to seven day business days for it to get into your account. And then you're like, okay, so <laughs> like, it's just, it's one of those things where it's like, it just, it, it might be nice if you explode and you randomly earn a shitload of bat that you just weren't expecting to cool. Maybe then, but the odds of that happening, it's, it's exactly like winning the lottery. Yeah. Like you, I'm sure. Actually, I'm not even. I'm not even sure. I, I, I can't. I don't have Brave installed, so I can't. I can't actually go see. But like, I wonder if like for the bigger Linux creators like DT, if he's gone through and set this up. I wonder if he has. Like, I know Brody has, but I, I would very be very much interested to know how, like how much they earn, because I bet you it's not very much. Like, like I oh, know no. that when Brave did, was doing its um like referral codes or whatever when they're trying to get people to actually sign up for brave through creator codes uh, then people were actually making some money because i know luke smith was talking about at some point he was making a couple thousand dollars or something uh, i don't know i don't know at what frequency uh on referral codes from brave but they don't do that anymore now it's just the, the advertising revenue going to uh, bat and then being contributed by you know viewers or whatever uh, like i just don't it, that's the re- that's the whole point behind this is that it just feels like they've added so many barriers to making it good like the coin is you know not great in the first place but even ignoring that making the process so hard that it that you have to have uh, two processes on both ends of the spectrum, the, the creator and the person who's giving the money. They've made it so convoluted to get from point A to actually getting the freaking money that chances are people just aren't going to do it. So I, I bet you the vast majority of people who who use Brave, who just have kind of stumbled upon Brave, I bet you very few of them actually go up into that little button at the top and say, hey, give this creator money. I bet you very few people do it. Um, and I mean, that's kind of... I mean, it, which means, by the way, the about, Brave, the Brave Corporation gets to keep all of their the money that they've gone through. They don't actually have to transfer hardly any of the money that they make to actual creators because nobody's actually going through that process. No, yeah. I mean the, the 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 main thing about Brave is it doesn't really solve what I would say is the actual issue in browsers at all. Everything is Chromium based. Everything is Chrome based. Like the entirety of browsers is Chrome based. Mm, that's a good point. It's crazy. Do you do you think that if let's just say, for argument's sake, everything was exactly the same, like they've gone through, they've created Bat, they've had the same process for giving creators money, all this stuff. Everything's exactly the same. The only difference is that instead of being based on Blink, it's based on Firefox. 
do you th- think our opinions then would change on Brave? No. No, because it would still just be another Firefox clone and Firefox is dying. It we we need a new web engine that's ha- I I don't care that it's not perfect, but it has to be half decent. That's not Firefox. It's not Chromium. It's not Chrome. None of that bullshit. It needs to be its own thing. I I think Brave is a good contender for it because they're doing their own search engine that's working out very well. Um, I mean, they're doing... While they've got a lot of gimmicky shit going on, they're also doing a lot of good things as well. So, I mean, we we can't completely neglect those. See, they, but at the same time, they need a new web engine, man. Okay, so I, I, need I, yeah, I agree with you that we do need more web engines out there. And I think that Brave would have been a good corporation to do that. Because the guy who started Brave is from Firefox. Like, he split off from Firefox because he wasn't happy with them. It would have been good if he went out and actually created something original other than taking Chromium and just doing another Chrome browser. And the, but the thing is, for me... Even if that was always a pipe dream, it would have been nice if instead of basing it on Chromium, they at least, like the minimum he could have done, or they could have done, was based it on Firefox. But at least then, I, it'd feel a little bit less, I don't know, scuzzy, you know? It's, it's really, it feels... Uh, like, like, well, let's be practical about this. Let's say you want to make a browser that works for the most amount of people. Are you really going to choose Firefox? Yeah, I mean, it's a good point, but it makes me sad. Exactly. I, I know. I, I, I'm not saying that it's good, but I'm just, I'm just saying let's be practical. Like, about it's it. a good like, point, but it makes me sad. We've, div- I think you and I both agree. And we said it at the beginning that Brave, in and of itself, is a good browser, but it's a good browser not because it's Brave, but because it's Chromium, right? Yeah. That's the reason why it's a good, a good browser. And and the reason why I left Brave behind wasn't because it wasn't a good browser, but because it felt odd for me to have this extra functionality that had been added onto it, this crypto stuff, and then not use it. Because like I, I left it up for like a month or almost two months, the whole mo- time I was using it for the most part, because I wanted to see just using it how much crypto or bat that I would I'd earn, and the grand total was two dollars and seventy six cents translated between bat and to actual you know money and that's just you know sitting there having a, an ad pop up every like five times an hour which by the way if you use a window manager and you're using dunst those ads are completely fucking useless anyways because you click on them the ad just goes away <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, like, like because dunst doesn't have clickable notifications like you can't actually click on it and have an action and just not the way dunst works so you, cl- I mean, I'm there's probably a workaround for that, but it doesn't matter. the The thing is, if you if you did happen to see an advertisement that you wanted to click on, you click on it. It doesn't even work. Like it was completely pointless. So they were actually paying me for no reason other than to have that thing. And it's not as if they were paying a lot of money, but still, the point point is, if you you actually had to be in a desktop environment in order for those ad those ads to actually work, dude. Uh- if advertisers found out <laughs> that was pretty common oh my god well you you had to think that i mean a lot of people probably are in the exact same situation they're using window managers and they don't have a notification nope. system other than dunst installed so so that's the reason why i left brave was because it just felt like i didn't need any of that stuff why am i using this thing that has no great extra features on top of it. It's basically just Chrome and I have to put up with the feeling that I'm not supporting them in some ways and also the crypto thing was always felt kind of shady to me and it's like really weird. Also I missed the user Chrome thing of Firefox so I ended up switching back to Firefox but I guess the my biggest thing about Chrome and we kind of devolved into talking about cryptocurrency there for a while and maybe that's well, a, I mean that I mean it it is directly related to Brave. I mean that is a big thing about Brave. Okay, their let me ask you this question: If the if inst- everything's exactly the same, we're we're putting ourselves in another scenario that's just like that. Okay. Uh, let's just say everything is exactly the same, except for instead of creating their own cryptocurrency, they just use Bitcoin. 
Um, like every t- every time time you did the, the the you got an ad, you got a, a minuscule amount of Bitcoin or something. No, it wouldn't be any different. You don't think so? Okay, I I I, haven't, no. I agree with you. Because I mean, it would still be just. I mean, it's still a gimmick. Like it's just a gimmick. Like you're not fixing the problem of ads at all. You're just substituting it, and you're not you're not addressing an issue. Like, I mean, l- look. Here's the real thing. People who are running websites and who have advertisements on them, as long as you see three or four advertisements on a page on a website, trust me, that website is not, I mean, they might not be making boatloads of cash, but they're at least doing okay. And if you watch a lot of YouTube and you're worried about, you know, people not being supported the like the way they should, just get YouTube premium. Like, you won't ever have to see ads on YouTube ever again. And YouTube actually does give creators more money for your views every time you watch something. And like, I mean, I, I can say that for a fact now that I'm actually being monetized. <laughs> yes. If you're using YouTube premium, I do make more revenue. Um, and it is noticeable. Like, uh, I mean, it's just, it, it's one of those things where it's a, it's a gimmick that doesn't solve a real problem. Like that's the core issue. It's not, I, I, I'm not even upset at gimmicks. Like gimmicks are fine, but I mean, it has to be cool. And it, and it, uh, if you're going to try and solve a problem, actually solve the problem. Yeah. But, well. I just keep trying to think of a solution that they could have done instead, but I don't, I, my biggest problem with it is not that they aren't solving the problem because I don't know that there is a solution for that particular problem that is, available to be spread across every platform so like you, you brought up youtube premium that's a solution for youtube it's not a solution for joe schmo's website.com you know what i mean well there's but that that's the core that's the core issue though is the uh, the whole idea is is that creators no matter where aren't making enough money so the idea that brave has is well instead of taking ad revenue and letting a company take a portion of it and then distribute it to each creator that you view, let's take all of that ad revenue, give it to you and you choose who you support. But the problem is, is nine times out of a, nine times out of 10, you'll funnel that into your favorite creator and the other ones who might not be your favorite, but you still watch don't get any support at all. And so Like, even though people, creators might not be making enough money, you know, in like wherever they might be online, like it, it doesn't solve the problem. Like it, it actually might even make it far worse. Well, yeah, that's true because you get to have to look into the point where we were talking about earlier, how it's hard to sign up for, but also it's a, it's a much more minuscule audience. So any amount that you are going to get is going to be so small. Is it even worth, you know, paying? Well, I mean, like, let's say you're only making $2 and 50 cents a month. That's not, you know, everybody knows it's not a ton of money. So if you're only working with that amount of money, you're going to give it to one creator. And let's just say that the people watching this, like those people, the people who are watching this podcast live would own, like, you would only choose to give either Matt or me support instead of if they watch my video, watch like this podcast, your video, and then another one of mine, like we both make revenue off of that. And uh, with Bat, only one of us would make revenue. Right. Well, I mean, they do have that auto contribute thing, but that auto contribute doesn't, it doesn't make sense for the amount of money that they're dealing with. You know, I mean, if, if you turn on auto contribute, and it just contributes to everybody who's eligible that you're going to be able to contribute to. You're talking about giving those creators probably pennies. And well, yeah. like I understand that every penny counts and that over time it might add up to a certain amount of money. And that's probably true. The bigger creators are pro- probably would be able to bring in some money, but you... The thing that has surprised me most, Tyler, about being a YouTuber over the last year and a half is actually, because you always hear how hard it is to make any money on YouTube. Like, you always hear that, oh, you're never going to make a dime on YouTube. Like, you can make all these videos and you're going to, you can have all these views. Like, I always talk about my mom who watches Dr. Phil. 
he he had somebody on there so oh you have to uh, he he had somebody on there about uh, who wanted to be a YouTuber and he brought up all these figures about how much money you'd have to make in order to make a you know a really good living on YouTube and like sure you do have to earn, you know get a lot of views and a lot of subscribers to earn a significant amount of money on YouTube but what surprised me the most about this is that even at like my size like I'm at eight thousand subscribers eight eighty five hundred whatever I still make a couple hundred dollars a month. You know, that's mm-hmm. real money. You know, that, that pays for food for the whole month, you know? Yep. So, I mean, my point of bringing that up is is that even if Brave had been successful in solving the problem of which you're talking about, the fact that they have created such a shit cryptocurrency that's worth absolutely nothing doesn't give... There's no hardly any possibility and, and of anybody making any real money, and the the few people who do make money, it's gonna it's becomes so hard to make that amount of money. You have to have, you know, tens of thousands of subscribers in order to make any appreciable amount through this. It's not like with YouTube where if you have eight thousand subscribers or a thousand subscribers or you know two thousand subscribers, you make at least a little bit of money. You can be surprised that, um, you know, you get a few hundred dollars a year even. It's still, you know, more than you're ever going to earn through bat. It, it, at least, nope. so I mean, the the biggest, it it, it just feel. If they maybe if they'd left crypto out of it and had it just be like I don't know actual money, <laughs> like real yeah. money, maybe this would. It, it still feels like it'd be really small and uh, not a great idea, but adding the crypto stuff on top of it in terms of and. That's why I brought up the the Bitcoin thing because, like, for me, maybe if it had been Bitcoin and the coin was actually worth something, like, maybe that would have been okay. But the the coin is worth hardly anything, <laughs> you know. Well, I I don't even think the coin matters that much because it's not something you want to invest in. Like, it doesn't. Like the the coin itself is kind of the the reason it's the ultimate form of a gimmick is no one's ever going to there, let's say there's I no other use for this coin it's money. just this right well yeah it's it's just for essentially giving giving what you earn through advertising to creators you no one's ever going to invest in the coin like I mean, why would you go out? Even let's say it's Bitcoin. Like, like let's say they're not using bad. It's Bitcoin. Would would you go out and buy Bitcoin to give it to a creator instead of just Keep. giving them money on Patreon or <laughs> there are multiple other ways of monetizing uh, an, a channel? Another thing to think about with the Bitcoin angle is that if you had Bitcoin to give. You're not giving that Bitcoin if it's worth $100,000 yeah. a coin. You're going to keep that fucking and Bitcoin. <laughs> here's something we haven't even talked about. Look, even if that was a investable token or something that was like actually like investment worthy that people wanted to, the fees for sending it in between each other would increase proportionally. Mm. And then you wouldn't ever want to give it. Well, yeah, and I think that that's exact. I think that exact. There's there's just so many things that are wrong with it. Like, the, the coin is worthless, and it has no ability to become more than what it is right now. It's literally this is the, it's it's a single use coin. It's this is the only thing you you're never like even if it's uber successful in doing what it does, you're never going to be able to say, well, you want to like, like Gardner Bryant said he bought his house with cryptocurrency, whether or not you believe that or not, whatever, uh, you know. You're never going to be able to say, "Well, I bought it with Bat." Like, yeah. no, you didn't. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that, that <laughs> like, like, like that's just never going to happen. Even if it became Uber, con- you, like, you're just never going to be able to say that because, in order for the reason why Bitcoin has gone up is is at least that it it has some functionality beyond just existing. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It has yeah. people are interested in using it as some kind of currency to trade between people. You know, uh. There's not a lot of goods that you can buy with Bitcoin, but they're like Amazon will well, actually there take... are a lot of goods that you can buy with it, but typically you're buying very expensive goods yeah. with Bitcoin. Yeah, well, I mean, because the you brought up the fees in order to offset the fees, they have to sell expensive things. But like, I'm pretty sure even like big retailers and stuff like that have at least thought about using Bitcoin and stuff like that. They're never going to say, "Well, you want to bring us your bat? We'll take that too." <laughs> like, it's just never going to happen. I would be a. St- 
I, I, I genuinely don't think, I mean, someone would have to deck me in the face to make me believe I wasn't sleeping if I walked into Walmart and they were accepting bath. Right. I, I genuinely th- would think I was dead. Like, I, no. And, and I, I think that out of all the problems that this has, that is probably the biggest one is that it has no growth potential. Like in, in order for any money that you have earned through bat, the only way to get that appreciably to something that you can actually use, you have to go to Gemini or whatever it is, translate that into another currency, whatever that is. And then you can finally do something. But by that point, you've earned so little anyways, by the time they take 15 or 20% or whatever the, the number is, what did you actually oh. earn? <laughs> yeah. And you spent all this time to get stuff like to get revenue that if you weren't worried about it and it wasn't even a thing, YouTube just takes care of it for you. Yeah. Well, like, I mean, don't, I mean, don't get me, don't get us wrong. YouTube obviously takes entirely too much money off the top of everything that they send creators. They take like 60%. It's ridiculous. Uh, yeah. Um, but <laughs> it's yeah. still actual money that you get, you know, <laughs> and and I will say one thing the it it sounds ludicrous, but if you think about it, YouTube is giving you not only access to market yourself, but uh, also they do all of your hosting for you as well. Um, they they take care of your community management mm-hmm. for you, um, and they also they have to deal with what we ask of them, and what we ask of YouTube is insane not only do we we want them to store essentially all too the much data. information <laughs> yeah like too much information that's even fathomable to understand but we ask them to store that and as well to try and like manage our you know uh, chats so that we don't get spanned by Plus Russian they have to take all the data that they store and stream it out to billions of freaking people in 4k <laughs> you know what i mean yep. <laughs> yeah you, you, yep. you know so uh, yes, they take too much money, but they actually also have people watching, and there's like an actual audience. You know what I mean? They're, they're, yeah. It provide it provides value, right? It's it, yeah. These the service that they provide is really incredible. As much as we shit on them, yes. because they can be lackluster at many a, many a times, but but um, oh, and yep, yeah, they are doing a good. Service. Obviously, not perfect. Like they have some ser- like yeah. TFL in the in the in the comments or in the chat says something about comments like comment moderation is a huge thing and they're horrible at it like they're really really bad at it uh but obviously uh you, you can't expect perfection i mean yeah. y- you can try I mean, <laughs> but yeah. with, with with how big youtube is it's very it's very hard to mon to like keep keep everything uh not just monetized but also like <laughs> uh moderated as well like you have to monetize things ensure that people aren't ruining relationships with your you know your marketing networks mm-hmm. and then you also have to make sure and moderate their chats so they they're not tempted to leave the platform for somewhere else um all right so that was a really really good conversation <laughs> Yes, it, <laughs> it was. was very good. Uh, normally, we don't get into that kind of stuff. Like, like, I've been very reluctant to talk about cryptocurrency, like on the channel and in a podcast, because it always, like every single time, without a doubt, I guarantee when I put this, if, if I put crypto in the title when this goes up tomorrow for everybody else, I guarantee there will be comments in the comment section saying, but crypto is awesome. And if you say anything against it, how dare you, you fat bastard. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You know, it's yep. just it's it's yep. absolutely guaranteed, uh, and it it wouldn't have, it wouldn't matter what we actually said about crypto either. Like if we we could say crypto is the best thing to ever happen to humanity, and we'd still get that one commenter who was not happy with what we said. You know, uh, and it, well, I mean, you you have to think about it like this: like crypto is one of those things where it's a not only is it a niche market, but it's also one of those markets where the people in it are highly invested like most of the crypto bros that you know will come in and drop those comments have like a large portion of their life savings in crypto and if you're if you're downing crypto 
their whole like you're, you're, literally everything about yeah, you're poo pooing on their life for his you well well and if you change enough people's mindsets about it their investment price will drop yeah and in their mind, you're responsible for killing their investment. Okay, so I'm not a financial advisor. Like You have to say that, right? That's the thing that you have to say when you're going to get a yeah, financial yeah. advice anyways. But I'm not a financial advisor. But here's the number one thing you can do if you're going to invest in something. Don't put all of your eggs in one basket. The fucking phrase exists for a goddamn reason. Don't put it all in crypto, you fucking dumbasses. <laughs> okay. And also, like, you should... Here's a little expansion on that. You shouldn't put most of your eggs in one basket either. No, no, no. Like, 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 like I understand the there's the the whole FOMO, right? The fear of missing out, right? Everybody sees like, mm-hmm. oh, people are becoming billionaires investing in 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 Bitcoin. I don't have that fear of missing out because I've already missed out. <laughs> Okay. Well, see, here's the thing. All right, let's say there's a shiny new cryptocurrency coming out that everyone's saying is going to, you know, uh, well, for one, if you ever hear uh, we're going to the moon or going to the moon, stay the fuck away. frack yeah, away yeah, from yeah. that. Because <laughs> yes. that is a scam 100%. Unless um, your name now, is Elon Musk because he says that all the fucking time too. Well, no, because Elon Musk, like Elon Musk is a weird one because he'll put money into something then he'll say it's going to the moon and then he'll sell it off like a week later after all the hype. So he, yeah, he makes a shitload of money biggest, no matter what. Biggest rug puller ever. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but um, uh, I mean, when it comes to crypto, like even if like you, you, you hear that there's a new crypto coming out and it's, you know, it's going to be the hot, the hot new thing. Check it out. If the technology behind it seems like it's going to solve a problem or that it's actually really cool and really unique, you, if you've got 25 bucks, throw 25 bucks at it. If you got 50 bucks, throw 50 bucks at it. It won't hurt anything. Here's the thing. Do not invest a lot of money into it because most likely it won't work out. And here's the thing. If it starts going up, don't invest more money. Keep it in. If it's like Bitcoin, imagine if you put if you put money in Bitcoin when it was like three dollars, yeah, and it's worth like fifty seven grand now. Like you're very well off, yeah. very well off. If you if you can get the money out, <laughs> well, yeah. Um, the, the the thing is is there's always a thing. Don't gamble more than you can afford to lose. Right, and that's the whole thing. You tell him, buddy. <laughs> uh-huh. He's seeing. He's seeing our neighbors. <laughs> like, it's just. I, it feels to me with the whole cryptocurrency. I mean, we kind of got into this, anyways. But it feels to me that when crypto is talked about, people lose their rational minds about everything. They they lo- they see other people earning a shit ton of money. They see all these cr- these influencers or whatever on TikTok and YouTube and stuff like that saying, "Oh, I, you know, I bought a a Ferrari and I bought, you know, look at this, you know, Hermes watch or whatever and, you know, I have billions of dollars cuz I invested in crypto and you should definitely do that too. You should also take my course and it's $200 a month or whatever." Uh, yeah. you know, they they see this stuff and they forget to use their common sense. It, it, yeah. it just has never like the idea behind like a, a decentralized currency. Fantastic idea! Like it's it's such a good idea to not have a, a government in control of the money supply. Uh, there are obviously environmental issues that we can talk about that that need to be solved and all this stuff. The idea behind it is good, just like the, the idea behind an NFT. Actually, a good idea. Uh, but it, uh, cryptocurrency and NFTs have been bogarted by everyone else into making it not such a good idea because it, it there's no there, there's too many people who have taken advantage of yeah. everything. Well, I mean, we all know crypto is littered with scams. Yes, yeah. like and so. e- even if you do the due diligence, like you said. You check it out and it looks okay. Even if you do that, there's still a good chance you're going to get scammed. Yeah. Like, yeah. Because there's no way to tell. Like, because I mean, there are charity coins that people have highly checked out and still end up being scammed. Well, well because, right. because the people behind these coins have some money and they've paid influencers who people, for whatever reason, trust. You know, like... like you know, to you, shell them out, you know, and you know, to, to pull to, the rug. To, yeah, and then they, then they, it's literally, it, it's just, it's, it's so hard. So that's the reason. That's, I mean, I, beyond the fact that I feel like I've already missed the train, 
I also have seen so many of these scams to think that, you know what? I like my money too much. Like, yeah, I, I could probably put some money into these and, and into something that I know for sure is not going to scam. Like if I put some money into Bitcoin or whatever. But even then, it feels too much like going to Vegas and putting some money on craps. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, well, I mean, it's the same thing. Like it, 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 it literally is like the the lottery. Like, it, yeah, you're buying your ticket to the lottery. Like, 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 yeah, you might see that money grow, but for the most part, it's probably going to land on a number that you didn't choose. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, that, that that's everybody's always asking. Well, what's your thoughts on crypto? Well, there's my thoughts on crypto. Nobody's gonna be happy with it because like the vast majority of people seem to be like, oh, crypto's awesome. Mm. Mm-hmm. All right, so uh, there's a good reason why we call it crypto nonsense. By the way, um, yeah. and and by the way, the only the, I I have two different cryptocurrencies that I own. I own Bat and I own uh the the, the library coin, whatever that's called, um, LBC. Right, those are the only two I own, and they're they they uh, are worth like maybe four cents combined. <laughs> so maybe maybe that's the reason why my opinion on crypto is so bad is because the only two crypto that I own are so completely worthless. <laughs> yeah. All right, so um, every once in a while, Mental Outlaw will post a thing on his community thing, and somebody give him like eight hundred dollars in Bitcoin. <laughs> like like maybe maybe you just have to be that size in order to actually get. Uh, actual yeah. cryptocurrency. <laughs> All right. Okay. Wow. We, we actually spent a long time on that topic. So let's go ahead and move on to the thingy of the week as we've become to call it. So Tyler, what is your thingy of the week? Oh, I'm glad you asked. Mine is uh, just in case I've never talked about it uh, before publicly. I think i have i'm not sure there's a website that you can go to uh so this is not i mean it is i mean i get i guess technically it's a web app but still uh, there's a nice website you can go to called terminal.sexy and it is an absolute fantastic website uh you can go there and you can uh browse a scheme browser find a whole bunch of different color schemes and uh, then you can export them. By the way, Matt, I'm looking at the stream, and uh, when the window is smaller, um, the scheme, the import, export. There's supposed to be scheme browser and other stuff there, mm-hmm. um, but you won't be able to see when it's smaller. Yeah, but, I can't so make it any bigger for anyone who's watching. Sadly, <laughs> yeah, that's good. J- just so anyone who's watching knows, it, it will be there when the window. Yeah, it is looks big. better full screen. Um, yeah, um, but uh, you can go in there, browse a whole bunch of different color schemes, and uh, easily export it to your X resources file, Alacrity. It has a whole bunch of different export temp- uh, export templates. Um, so it's a fantastic website if you've never heard of it before, and you know you want to mess around with your co- your terminal color schemes. It's a great place to go. I highly recommend it. They've got they've got a. a pretty good selection of color schemes plus you can obviously go through and just completely make your own um yeah yeah. uh, the most confusing thing about a terminal ever is trying to figure out what color goes where you know (laughs) yeah trying to figure out what color of these 16 colors actually affects what thing in the browser is trying to figure that out Mm -hmm. uh i i'm Terminal for Life probably knows because he knows everything about the terminal. It's literally in his yep. name. <laughs> but I guarantee you everybody else has no clue what color number 10 applies to. Like, we know yep. that it's the green color, but where does the green show up? What When does that show up? What Does it, is, does it apply to variables? Does it apply to your prompt? What does it apply to? Nobody knows. All right. <laughs> yep. That's why this website is so good. Uh, yeah. yeah. So good. <laughs> like you can actually go through and kind of see where what color is actually going to show up. Uh, I wish they had, like, you know how they have different modules on here? I wish they had a NeoFetch one. Like, in one of their things, mm-hmm. like, you have a NeoFetch one. So you could actually go through and see what the colors would look like in the NeoFetch. That'd be awesome. Mm-hmm. But they don't. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so, yeah, Term for Life, or Term for Life, text, uh, term, Terminal.sexy should actually be Terminal for Life's domain name. That'd be awesome. <laughs> Dude, that would be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that'd be, like, Terminal.sexy, that should be his URL. <laughs> What's wrong with yeah. it? Uh, anyway, so my uh, my um, my thingy of the week is called Gallery DL. Now, I talked about this in the top apps of the month a couple months ago, and it's one of those applications where I actually still use it. Now... Basically, what this does 
is it allows you to go through and download things from a multitude of websites, usually images, uh, but it applies to some other things too. So for example, uh, it works with Wallhaven. So you can go through and you use Gallery DL. It's a, it's a, it's a CLI tool. Uh, you do gallery DL dash and then a link to a, a wallhaven search you, you you do that and it'll literally download every single wallpaper in that search so so, so for example you go to wallhaven and you search for anime schoolgirls because that's what you do um yeah of course i mean of course obviously um of course yeah. and then you put that no you, more needed to be said of course. you put that url in that you know gallery DL thing and it will literally download every single wallpaper at the fullest re resolution into a folder of that search now uh, it has a list of like over a hundred different websites that it, it will work from including reddit pinterest uh and things like that 500 pixels so a lot of legitimate websites will work with this um uh if you go to the if you go to the page where it has all the sites that it works with you'll notice that there's a lot of porn uh word uh so a lot of awesome. a lot of hentai stuff i'm just saying if that's if that's your thing rule 30 rule 34 exists for a reason my Wait, friend <laughs> hold on, hold on. i'm just trying to imagine because i i believe this tool will be most likely used for like wallpapers and now i'm just trying to imagine how many guys out there have a hentai as their wallpaper like, <laughs> as your wallpaper man? well no it's not Come the on. thing is it's not just for wallpaper so like for it also has anime stuff so if you're into anime and want to get into that stuff it'll actually go through a website if you search for if it if it works with this and you get into you go to the website you search for whatever you want to do and it'll actually go through and download every single thing in that search to your computer so if it's if it's a whole bunch of anime comics or whatever or a comic book or whatever the hell they're called obviously not in anime <laughs> I don't know what they're calling graphic novels, mangas, or whatever. yeah, yeah, that word. Um, but anyways, you can go through and do that. Um, like I said, there, don't get scared away just because like half the websites that it works for are porn. I'm just gonna say that. Okay. Uh, the coolest thing is that there's some websites out there will actually work for like um, written things too. So if, if you're into written stories like fan fiction or whatever, you'll actually download some of that stuff too as well. So it's really cool. Um, obviously I don't download any of the porn. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Anyways, um, that's gallery DL sure. links for all this stuff will be in the video description. Um, we all know Matt had to do a few downloads just for science, just to make sure it worked you know, for science. Obviously yeah. I wanted to make sure that the, the horse porn.com thing actually yeah. worked, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. I mean, just have to check it out. Somebody, somebody is going to go f look and see if horseporn.com actually exists. I guarantee that's going to happen. Uh, so, uh, and if it does, if it does exist, I have no clue. By the way, <laughs> just like not, not my kind of thing. But well, look, after you search it, don't be surprised when your local authorities stop by to just give you a little checkup, make sure you're all right. Also, um, just don't be surprised at what you see. <laughs> You know, because chances are that's going to be the one URL that took it literally. <laughs> you know, that's exactly what it is. You go there, you get what you asked for. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> no, actually, what it is, it's not a porn site. It's a dating site. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I, I actually wouldn't be surprised if that website does exist. It's just, it's just hard. Like, it's just like a farm. No, no, it's just like no, somebody I, who films their horses. <laughs> it would be absolutely hilarious if it does exist, and it's actually like a like a quilting qu club or something for old grannies or something. They just didn't realize what it was. No, they have no idea. Uh, like they make a whole bunch of horse quilts. They have no idea. Uh, well, well, we have Unix porn, so basically that's just it, it's just for them for, for their it's, the quilts. You just load it up, and it's a website of beautiful horses. You're like, wait, what? People out there painting their horses. <laughs> <laughs> and they call it ricing. <laughs> they rice their horses. <laughs> oh God! And I haven't laughed that hard in a long time. That's so good. <laughs> yeah. On on that note, <laughs> I think we better wrap this shit up. All right. If uh -huh. uh, if you want to get in contact with us, all the contact information happened earlier in the video. You should go back and listen to that because I'm not doing it again. You can support me on Patreon at Patreon.com/slash/newscast. Tyler is Patreon.com/slash. The official zany um, wait on patreon on, oh on patreon no it is 
AKA, AKA Zany. Zany. You really need to get those URLs lined up, bro. Um, there's I, I, know, I, know. I can't remember shit, and you want me to remember two different URLs? <laughs> just buy horseporn.com and create, yeah, a, I'll just, a, create I'll, a redirect. I'll just serve all of my content there. <laughs> He gets the website done before I get my website done. I'm just saying this is definitely going to happen. <laughs> well, I mean, if anyone wants my only source for web content, like if you actually want to go to my website, the only one that I have up is my Gemini capsule. And I actually am going to be updating that very, very soon. Um, okay. Um, anyway, I'll probably be doing a Chronicles of Gen 2. Uh, <laughs> yeah, if, if you actually make it a Gen 2 for another week, which I don't. Mm. Sorry, man. Don't got faith in you. Anyhow, <laughs> anyways, yeah. We'll see. Before we go, I should take a moment to thank my current patrons. Sid A, Devon, Patrick L, Primus, Marcus, Meglin, Jackknife, Tool, Steve A, Shabra, Gary, Lennox, Garrick, Mitchell, Archer, and Carbidated. Jeremy, Sean, Odin, Martin, e, Eric Kemp, Joshua Lee, J-Dog, Peter A, Crucible, Dark Bandit 6, and Vlad A. I always do that better live than I do when I'm recording a video. I swear to God, sometimes it takes me nine <laughs> takes in order to read all those videos or all those names. <laughs> So, anyways, thanks everyone for watching. Coming up next week, uh, what were we talking about next week? Ah, f I don't even know. Four. Good lord. Too many workspaces, damn it. <laughs> See? Told you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, next week, we're going to be talking about will source based distros become more popular than ever? Mm hmm. Um, I think so. I don't think so. <laughs> I, I think Matt and a whole bunch of other creators are going to start shilling them. I think, I think that's what's going to happen. Uh, TFL in the in the, in the the chat just said, I don't see Tyler lasting on Gentoo either. So <laughs> Your friends just have no faith in you, my friend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm just sorry. It's just, it, it's sad. Well, look, I'll just go ahead and say it. I look forward to seeing all of you guys next week. On Gentoo? Yeah. On Gentoo. I yeah. will believe that when I see it. Anyway, so that is it for this week. We'll see you next week. Boys. <laughs>